Four stocks on my potential buy list this week. Like many of you, I put money into the market every single week trying to build my wealth over time. And remember, wealth is not built in a matter of a few weeks or in a matter of a few months. Right now, we are seeing, I want to say, a pretty, pretty horrible time in the market. And I know a lot of people are getting scared. I want to say I'm right there with you, right? My portfolio has gone down. But I do believe right now for long-term investors, this is a great accumulation phase where I personally just want to keep adding and adding and adding and adding who knows i don't think my portfolio might do good for the next 12 months but i'm okay with that because my time frame is multiple years so maybe in the three four or five years from now the stocks that i'm buying now will most likely be a lot higher than they're at right now and i think that's the best thing about investing right you have time on your side and it's best to invest money that you don't need tomorrow that you don't need next month because the market is such a volatile place and so much could happen right so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode i just wanted to remind you that hey i'm right there with you you're not the only one feeling the pain so let's get started with today's episode but before we get started make sure to hit the thumbs up make sure to hit the subscribe button check out the pin comment for free discord free newsletter and a lot of great investing links all right so today's four stocks are all in the same market and this is i want to say the first time i've been so so bullish in this industry and that is the semiconductor market right so in general i have been bullish in the semiconductor industry but i haven't been bullish in forms of prices and if i i usually post my weekly buys and most people can go back to 2020 and notice that i barely purchased any semiconductor companies in 2020 or in 2021 2022 though the story has changed i've been buying semiconductor companies uh almost on a weekly basis different kinds from your high growth stocks to your kind of not so growth but nice dividends to have semiconductor stocks i think the industry as a whole is looking very very attractive uh there is a lot of negativity right now right the overall semiconductor shortage we also have kind of the fear of consumer spending decreasing and we also have the fear that this is still a slick cyclical market as it has been before uh i do want to say this is probably the first time in this market that we have big players like data centers like cloud providers really focusing in semiconductors that hasn't been the case i want to say in previous uh semiconductor cycles the other thing is uh, many people fear or hear when they hear cyclicality they believe it only goes up and down but normally in the cyclo market for the semiconductor the new lows are always higher than previous lows so there's always been an uptrend in the semiconductor industry and for those that don't know i do the reason i focus a lot in the semiconductor market is this is where my education and work experience background comes from i used to be an engineer working in an innovative industry uh, where i saw a lot of this great technology being used also i do come with a master's degree in electrical engineering so this is the market i truly truly understand i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video and keep listening for this great offer we have for the community the Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investments. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you a discount for one of my favorite services The Fool offers, The Motley Fool Stock Advisor. Go to fool.com slash Jose to sign up and get access to a ton of expert stock picks Every month, you'll get two new picks that are aimed at growing your wealth and to help you realize your financial goals. Stock Advisor has been a market-beating service. So what are you waiting for? Thanks again for The Motley Fool. Now on to today's points. So the first stock I want to take a closer look at is AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. This is a stock that has fallen over, over, I want to say 45% now. Yep, 45% from its all-time highs. This is ticker AMD. So there are numerous reasons why I am bullish in AMD, but one of my favorite reasons I have two main reasons. The first reason is the recent acquisition of Silence. And Silence opens up a whole new world and market for AMD. It increases their data center market, which is amazing. The data center market is one that we're seeing still strong growth in. So even if consumer spending might be decreasing, data centers might be growing. Uh, so I'm super excited there. The second thing, this is opening a market of embedded items. And embedded items goes in numerous things like the automotive market, the Internet of Things market, robotics 
robotics market and again these are markets that we're seeing strong growth in so amd the silent Lynx acquisition is uh, i want to say probably one of the best things that has happened for to the company in a long time the other thing i do want to say is amd even though by, by himself it continues to do pretty well they do create consumer processors but they also create processors for data centers and cloud providers and they are seeing strong growth here we have seen numerous kind of videos in the past where i kind of talk about how highly adopted their new processors are continue to get they have a huge roadmap coming out and we can take a quick look for their most recent year of 2021 they grew 68 percent year over year and they are still expecting double digit growth this year their upcoming earnings might be a bit scary because people might be fearing the consumer spending going down or the overall kind of guidance that they're giving again i do believe this might happen and if it does it might con continue to create more buying opportunities but in the long term of things i think amd is sitting very very attractive right now the second company this is one that personally i have not added in a long 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 time but this is my number one company and that is nvidia we are finally seeing this stock price below 200 dollars uh sitting right now at 195 again i do believe we, we have that fear of consumer spending and just the overall tech market right so much happening in the overall kind of global economy but nvidia is a company i believe it's not going anywhere anytime soon and for me i dollar cost average I believe it's looking very very attractive so what are some reasons i enjoy nvidia if we take a quick look at their most recent revenue gaming is the biggest portion of this company's total revenue so what consumer market so we're seeing that fear but data center is catching up i do believe maybe this quarter or next quarter data center will finally kind of beat the gaming market especially with the current growth rates that it's seeing the other things is they also hit other kind of enterprise and outside markets outside of consumers professional visualization for example it's closing into that it's already closer to that 1 billion mark now uh the automotive market nvidia is pushing really really closely into creating their chips for the kind of automotive market they are expecting to start production on that this quarter so hopefully we get to see some great results if not the upcoming quarter as well if we take a quick look they do everything from creating hardware to software platforms and application frameworks this is a company that i want to say is perfect at creating problems that companies at creating solutions to problems companies never thought they had and once they show them hey this is a problem you actually have you don't know about it and we can solve it and it's doing amazing things for the industry again some of my favorite things are the automotive market and their robotics market which i believe can continue to grow as the years progress now let's take a closer look at the my third company this is going to be qualcomm secret q com if we take a quick look from its 52 week high the stock i think has fallen the most out of most of these uh almost 30 percent so qualcomm the reason it has fallen this much obviously the consumer market fear a lot of their revenue comes from like the cell phone and handset market and we are seeing kind of a lot of reports online that cell phone data cell phone sales are going down consumer kind of spending again and laptops and mobile devices might be dropping so i do believe this is affecting qualcomm a lot some things that i really do like about qualcomm look at that dividend yield the, a growth of a dividend yield of about 2.2 percent right now we can see from this report another thing is you, normally you see that type of growth and you don't believe it's a growth stock but if we take a quick look at their fourth quarter year over year revenue growth grew 30 percent their main business grew 60 percent year over year which is pretty pretty impressive we can take a quick look at that Mo obviously most of the revenue comes from handsets about six billion dollars but they are kind of focusing in the automotive market which is super small but i believe will be a strong player again the internet of things again super small right now not a small but i do believe this can get bigger with things like robotics with things like autonomous uh, delivery systems outside of vehicles uh, will continue to grow same with the automotive market and qualcomm is doing a lot right especially to kind of increase their solutions in other markets. Um, Qualcomm recently acquired Arriver, uh, a business from SSW Partners, and this increases 
uh, Qualcomm's technologies for ADAS, Autonomous Driving Assistance System. Uh, so overall increasing the automotive market. And Qualcomm has done really well at creating the Snapdragon, which is a processor for cell phones. When you create a processor for cell phones, you need to make sure that they're good with heat, that they're good with power efficiency, and at the same time that they're powerful, right? And all these, the way, the products that they've learned in their cell phone technology they're starting to use in other products like out of motor market and i do believe soon we're going to see even bigger things in things like robotics so great news there now the final company i want to take a quick look at is tsm taiwan semiconductor manufacturing so qualcomm and tsm these are actually the two that i have been adding over time i haven't really focused in the high growth too much like amd like nvidia but Qualcomm and TSM, I do believe these have been sitting at very attractive levels. And we'll take a closer look at charts in a bit. Uh, and these are ones I still want to add over time. So TSM sitting at $95.68. Another one that comes with a dividend yield of about 2%. If we take a quick look at TSM's most recent earnings, we can see that this company grew revenue 35% year over year. So there's still huge, huge demand. These earnings were reported about three weeks ago so it's brand new to the market and we can see revenue by platforms high performance computing with things like cloud providers like data centers this is now the biggest portion now even bigger than smartphones and this grew 26 percent uh, quarter over quarter so huge growth rate there and we can see the out of market is also seeing huge growth uh, so these are the two players i believe that if a company either has solutions in here or has solutions incoming to these markets markets are great plays for the long term of things so high performance computing and the automotive market so i want to finish off with kind of taking a quick look at ev to ebitda ratios for all companies we can see for amd 33.64 these are values also seen kind of in 2019 2018 so it's telling me amd is not that crazily priced right now nvidia might be a little bit high 42.25 but these are kind of levels seen in 2020 lower than 2021 and lower than most of 2022 we can see these are also prices probably near 2018 again it tells me that hey it's not completely overpriced i do believe nvidia is still a little bit overly priced compared to some of the other players but i do believe nvidia has a little bit more growth potential than some of the other players and it has been improving its gross margins if we take a quick look at qualcomm's ev to EBITDA ratio 11.2 this is in my opinion dirt cheap to where it's been in 2020 and 2018 and 2019 so qualcomm for me looks very very attractive tsm 12.37 normally this one is in the 10 uh, we can see in 2019, 2018, it was closer to the 10 values. So 12.37 might be a little bit expensive compared to where it's been in the past. But but there's still a huge growth rate coming up in the future that I do believe it's not crazily overvalued. Obviously, stock prices can continue to go down. I'm not saying this is the bottom. I don't think the bottom is here i don't think we're i don't think time wise we're close to the bottom i think it's going to continue to be volatile uh, for numerous numerous months maybe even a year or so like i said for me right now accumulation phase and that's what i'm focusing on so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode take care have a good day and see you next time